Hi everyone, Krista Cowan here with another episode of The Barefoot Genealogist. Today we are talking about the life events in the lives of your ancestors and their family members. Specifically, we're going to be talking about where in Family Tree Maker and your online Family Tree at Ancestry, regardless of which one you use, where you can find those life events, how you can add them, how you can create custom life events, and then we'll end with a little bonus um, about some things that Family Tree Maker can do that your online tree can't do. So let's go ahead and dive in. And we're going to start with um, showing you where you can find all of the life events, uh, both in your online tree and in Family Tree Maker. Let's start with uh, the online tree. So here is my tree. Um, I've got my great grandmother here as the home person. We're going to take a look at her grandmother, Mary Ann Dunlap. So when we talk about life events, very often people get stuck in their head um, that it's just about finding a birth, a birth date and a death date. While those are certainly very important events, in fact, we call them vital events in a person's life, um, and they give us the framework for the person's life, they don't tell the whole story. And so as you scroll down the timeline of the person's life, you're going to see other events like her marriage, also considered a vital record, a vital type of event. You're going to see residence events, and <clears throat> then you're going to see that death event. Here's the thing. Um, some of these events you create when you enter a fact about a person. So for example, um, the birth, the marriage, those are created very often when we just fill out some of the basic information about a person. Some of these events are created automatically when you attach a record. So for example, I've attached the 1850 census here, and that created an 1850 residence event or fact that it dropped into the timeline for this great grandmother. Now, you can add other facts. And the way you do that is by just using this add a fact button. You can, there's actually a couple of places you can do it from. There's also a facts and sources tab. And when you click on edit person, you'll see some of those facts as well. But for our purposes, let's just click on this add a fact button. And I wanted to show you some of the facts that are available to add. We have those vital events up here at the top, birth, death, marriage, and then we have a custom event available for you. But there are also um, dozens of other kinds of events. Now this list I can't make much bigger, um, and so I'm just gonna read through it for you because I think it's really important to start to think about all of the different kinds of things that happened in your ancestor's life and where you might find that information. Some of these things would lead you to other records if you started thinking about it. So we've got address, adoption, adult christening, also known as, which is uh, if you've got a different, if they went by a different name in their lifetime, annulment, arrival, okay, that's, a, that's one of those facts that's automatically added when you attach a passenger list or an immigration list. It's also recorded on some census records. And so that arrival fact might automatically be created if you were attaching, for example, a 1920 census where that information is included and indexed. A baptism, an LDS baptism, a bar mitzvah or a bat mitzvah. Uh, there's that birth fact. It shows up in the main list. We've just called it out up here separately, but it's the same fact. It's not a separate birth fact. A blessing, a burial, a cast. So you'll notice some of these facts are tied to specific dates, right? A burial occurs on a specific date in a specific location. Um, and then there's usually, so there's usually going to be a date, a location, and a description field. Some of these um, are, uh, they're just description only fields because they're about more information about your ancestor. So there are some cultures where there is a caste system and knowing what caste your family member is in is an, is an important part of their life story. And so that's a fact that is a description only fact. There's no date attached to that because it's not an event per se. 
A cause of death, again, this, this is different than the death event, which is a date and a place. A cause of death is a description only, so you can add that as a separate fact. Some people wanted a separate census field different from the residence field, and so we've given them that option. Uh, christening, circumcision, confirmation, LDS confirmation, cremation, there's that custom event again. Death, uh, degree, so if your um, family member um, obtained a degree or several degrees in a certain field through higher education, you can add that information. Uh, departure, so if they've migrated from somewhere, right? So uh, emigrated from somewhere different than an arrival. A description, I love this field because you can, um, you know, just again, it's a, you just type it out, you know, what you found out about what they looked like. Uh, destination, divorce, divorce filed, DNA markers, education, uh, elected, if they served in an elected, uh, as an elected official. Uh, email. So if you've got living family members, you can add information about their address or their email address in this case so that you can contact them. That becomes important. Um, but remember that if, if you have living people in your tree, that information is available to you because you own the tree. Uh, but it is not available to anybody else who can see your tree unless you have expressly given that specific person permission to see living people in your tree. And so um, you can add information about living people to your tree and know that even if your tree is public, that information is privatized. We have emigration, employment information, endowment, engagement, excommunication, first communion. You'll notice a lot of these facts have to do with religious ceremonies or religious services. Um, that's because a lot of times that made up a large portion of the lives of many of our ancestors. A lot of them religion framed um, how and why and when they might they immigrated. Um, it framed who they worked and worshipped and lived near. Uh, sometimes it um, even determined, uh, you know, language and customs that were handed down from generation to generation. And so religious, a lot of these facts are religious events um, because uh, up until recent history, that was a large part of the lives of many people and, and determined a lot of their, their life circumstances. It's also because that's a lot of the records that were available. The churches for centuries kept far better records than the governments, and many of those records survive. So there are Catholic, um, you know, Catholic records that list um, the rights of the Catholic Church. There are LDS records that list the rights of the LDS Church. In England, um, the parish registers are some of the only places where births are recorded because children were brought um, for baptism or for christening rather and the birth was often recorded at the time of christening the church also managed the marriage and it also managed the burial so the, the death was recorded <clears throat> so for centuries sometimes churches are the only places that actually recorded the information that we're looking for and so a lot of these you'll notice you know Ex endowment, excommunication, first communion are um, rights for particular religions and sometimes rights across many religions. The um, information about a funeral, graduation, height, immigration, initiatory, marriage, marriage, and, and you'll notice here there's going to be several categories under marriage. There is a marriage fact, and that's the one that most of us use most often. But there are also separate facts here for a marriage ban. Okay, marriage bans had to be posted three consecutive Sundays before um, the wedding took place. Uh, that was to give people the opportunity to um, object <laughs> if there were any objections, if the bride or groom had been previously married and that marriage had not been um, resolved that was an opportunity for people to come forward and say that. And so you could put in information about when the bans were posted. Uh, marriage contracts sometimes, even today, are entered into. Uh, marriage licenses. So I have seen many cases, surprisingly, more than I would expect, um, where a marriage license was obtained 
but they didn't actually go through with the marriage. And so uh, that's a separate fact, right? Sometimes the date that you're looking at when you're looking at a record is actually the license date, not the date the marriage took place. So you need to make sure you know what it is that you're looking at when you're looking at a record. And then marriage settlement. Okay, we're into the M's now here. Let's scroll down a little bit more. We also have here medical information, military service, military serial numbers, mission, a name. Okay, again, that's something that's created, a fact that's created automatically when you add a person, but you can add additional or alternate names if you feel the need to do so. Namesake. So if you know, for example, that this person was named for somebody specific, you can create a fact that explains that. Nationality, naturalization, occupation, ordinance information, ordination, origin. Uh, here's another uh, phone is this is for obviously again for living people if you want to create kind of a database of that information probate property religion residence that's one of those facts that's added automatically when you create a, when you attach a census record retirement scrolling down ceiling to parent ceiling to spouse separation so there are times when, um, again, I see this more often in my tree than I would expect, where people separate, sometimes legally, sometimes informally, and never actually divorce or file for divorce. And so they live separately uh, for you know decades until they pass away. Uh, sometimes that separation is a legal separation, but either way, you could add that as a fact and you know, put a date on it and then add a description to it if you felt the need to do so. Social security number is one of those facts that gets created automatically uh, when you attach a social security death index uh, record to a person. Title, this is that field that you use uh, if you're going to add a title to a person, rather than putting it in the name field, which technically is not correct, right? Um, a reverend, doctor, um, colonel, captain, right? Military titles, occupational titles. Those people weren't born with those titles. They're not officially part of their name. And so you're going to want to use the title field to add those pieces of information. And again, Somebody could have multiple titles. We could have somebody who was a reverend and a doctor, or somebody who was uh, you know, a colonel uh, and a captain, right, as they advanced through the ranks. I did that backwards, but you get the point. Um, and so, um, so you can have multiple titles. So every one of these facts, you can add multiple times. Um, depending, uh, again, on the circumstances of the person's life. And what you're doing is every time you add one of these facts, specifically if these facts um, are date uh, are date bound, then you're going to create a timeline of events in their life that is going to tell a more complete story about their life. Um, a web address, and you can use that for living people who have websites, or also, if you found you know, your ancestor on Wikipedia, or you found somebody had created a website or a web page about them, you can add that information. Wait and will. So those are all the facts that are available for your online tree. And I hope you catch this vision of all the different things that are possible. So as I come in here to tell the story of the life of this ancestor, um, that is one way that I could do it. I could just add fact after fact after fact um, that then comes into this timeline and starts to give this picture of their life. Um, anytime I add descriptive information, it's gonna show up here underneath. So you're gonna have a, a date and a fact a location, and then that description information is going to show up right here. Now, let me show you uh, in Family Tree Maker how this is a little bit different. So, in Family Tree Maker, uh, we have the ability here to manage facts, and that's going to bring up our fact list. And let me expand this just a smidge here. It's not going to make the the text any bigger. 
Um, and so I'm just gonna, what the purpose of this is just to show you a couple of things. The first one is to show you that almost every one of these facts is the exact same as what you find in um, your online tree. What you're gonna see differently here are facts that I, custom facts that I have created. So for example, I have a fact here called a tree. Um, basically what that is, is it's a, it's a custom fact that I created that allows me to um, put in a URL or a web address for somebody who has a tree on ancestry.com. So for example, if my cousin uh, has gone in and has, has done his family tree, then I might paste his the URL of his ancestry tree onto his profile so that when I'm looking at his profile, I can say, oh, he has a tree online in Ancestry. I can just copy and paste that URL and it takes me right to it. So it's kind of a way that I keep track of, you know, kind of a database. I keep, my family tree maker becomes a database for me is what happens. If I scroll down here a little bit, you're gonna see um, a couple of other facts that, um, again, some of them are unique to Family Tree Maker and some of them are custom that I've added. Some of them are shared facts, and we didn't talk about that in your online tree, but you do have those available there as well, which means they're not about this person, they're attached to a couple or to a relationship. So uh, currently spouses, right? Are these people still married? That's a fact. Um, we talked about divorce and divorce filed. I've added another DNA field. So the, the DNA fact that already existed was called DNA markers. And that was specifically designed for the old um, mitochondrial and Y DNA testing. But now that we have this new autosomal testing, I wanted to add a new field so that I could keep track of my DNA matches and the trail between that DNA match and our common ancestor. And so I created this custom field called DNA connection. And what I do is in that field, if it's my DNA match, I paste the URL of the match from my ancestry tree. And then if it is um, the link back to, from them to our common ancestor, I put DNA connection and then when I get to that common ancestor in this field, which is a description only field, I put common ancestor. So it's just a quick, easy way for me to keep track of um, who's who I'm connected to genetically. I've created another custom field here called documented. What that means is uh, when I have completed um, the the genealogical proof standard for a particular person and their life or when I've wrapped up all the research and found all the records I'm going to find and and written up all the source citations and done everything I drop a date into that field um, and the reason I I created it that as a date field rather than just a yes no field is because um, I have several of those that are dated prior to the release of the 1940 census. So up to that point, I had documented everything I could, but then the 1940 census was released by the federal government, and now I could go back through everybody who I had documented prior to the release of that 1940 census and see if they were still living in 1940 and add that particular set of records. So it's just a way, it's just, again, just a custom field that I've created that allows me to know if I have completed documentation on a given, on a given person or not. Um, so again, some of these are the same fields that we saw. There is an, a custom field in Family Tree Maker for eye color. I've added a custom field for Facebook. So again, I have a lot of living people in my database. I do a lot of descendancy research. If I find this person on Facebook and connect with them, I just drop their Facebook URL uh, into, uh, into the database there. Um, there's some additional fields, family search ID, GEDCOM ID. Those are if you've imported uh, records from other places. It allows you to keep track of that. And some of that information is generated automatically. There's one here for medical conditions. Um, you're gonna see a field here for an obituary. Uh, that, I believe, is a custom field that I created as well. I wanted to be able to keep track of who I had found obituaries for and who I hadn't. 
Um, let's see what else we've got here. Property, uh, if, they've, if they owned property or purchased property, you can keep tra track of that. Um, race, uh, let's keep going here. Uh, retirement, I think, uh, is an interesting one. And I think everything else is pretty much the same. So most of the fields are gonna be identical in Family Tree Maker and in your online tree. Uh, this list is going to only grow, though, as you add new custom facts. Now, I mentioned you can create these facts, and you can do this um, by clicking the Custom Fact button in your online tree or by clicking the New button here while you're managing your facts in Family Tree Maker. That fact can be an individual fact or a shared fact for a relationship, and you have the option of making it a date and place fact, a date, place, and description fact, or a description only fact. And in Family Tree Maker, you have some additional features. One of the things you can do here is make a fact private. So for example, I have those Facebook IDs and email addresses, and even though those people are living, I've gone ahead and made that fact private, which means that when I sync my Family Tree Maker program with my online tree, which I do regularly, that it's going to upload all that information to my family tree online so that I have access to it, but it's gonna make sure that that specific fact is privatized. Now with living people, that's not as big of a concern because their information is privatized anyway. But there are some facts that are attached even to deceased people that you might want to make private. Facts that might have something to do uh, with, you know, cause of death or anything that you're that you feel is is maybe too sensitive or that you don't want to make public even though your tree might be public so you can privatize an entire fact no matter where it shows up in your tree or you can privatize those facts at an individual level so if i wanted for example cause of death to always be public but on these one or two people i want it to be private i could do that so that's where you're going to find those facts in your online tree and in Family Tree Maker. We went through and we reviewed the list of standard events and I talked to you about creating some custom events. Let me wrap up by just sharing with you one of the really cool things. This is kind of a bonus feature that you can do in Family Tree Maker that you can't do in your online tree. One of the things you can do in Family Tree Maker is that you can then filter by any one of those events. So I can come in here to Family Tree Maker, and here's my index of all 65,324 people in my tree, and I have the ability to create a filter where I'm going to filter in, and it's gonna take, the bigger your database is, the slower the filters work. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and filter in, um, and I'm gonna look at all facts and I want to pick a fact here. Let's just pick one. Let's pick my DNA fact here. So here's my DNA connection fact. And you can say, it has to say something specific in that field. So if you've, um, you know, depending on how you use this information, uh, you can make that determination. Or I can just say it's not blank, which means I want to see anybody who has anything in that particular field. And then just click OK. And what it's gonna do is it's gonna run through my entire database and it's going to pull up everybody in my tree who has something in that DNA fact field. And then it's gonna filter my list from that 65,000 people in my tree. Um, it's gonna apply that filter and it's gonna be down here to 1,100 some odd people, okay? And now when I click on one of these people, let me find somebody who's um, deceased there, okay? Um, you're going to see the DNA fact over here uh, has something in it. In this case, it says DNA circle, uh, DNA circle, DNA connection. Okay, so what that means is um, that Louisa Jane Berry, who is actually the daughter of my fourth great grandparents, um, has children, if I scroll through her list of children here, um, who I share DNA with, there's a DNA connection, and who also share DNA with other people that I share DNA with. And that's 
they show up in DNA circles. That's what that notation means. So I've created this little system that helps me keep track in Family Tree Maker of all those connections that I've made through DNA. So that's just one way you can use those filters. Another um, feature of Family Tree Maker that's a little bit different is the ability to customize your person view over here. So if I um, come over here to my person panel on the right hand side, I can click customize view and I can take any one of those facts and I can add or remove it from that particular list. So I can put it on the list and move it around. Um, I could add, for example, if I wanted to add, um, let's see here, an also known as fact, I could add that and move it up the list to the very top. Okay, so now when I click OK, you're gonna see that also known as. So if she had a different name, and we're not talking about just like a married name versus a maiden name. Like if, you know, if she was known as, you know, Susan something Johnson because she was adopted or because she came to the United States and changed her name or whatever, um, I could add that in the also known as field, put that right here in my person panel, and then it bumps right up. Um, I can bump it right up to the top of the list. I can do that with all personal facts, individual facts, and also any shared facts. So if I wanted to know, for example, if this there was a divorce or um, you know a separate, like I could add any one of these facts to this particular list. And when it gets too long for the panel, it just gives me a scroll bar so that I can move that up and down. So those are some of the features that are available a little differently in Family Tree Maker than in your online tree. It's one of the reasons I love having both and having them work together. But even if all you have is an online tree, there are still some really great facts available to you. Again, you can click on um, the edit person button and add any new life event. You can also click on this relationship events tab and add any shared events that they might have with particular spouses. So lots of really great um, ways to tell the story of the life of your ancestor, making sure that all the information that you know about them is recorded. And of course, then reviewing that list of facts hopefully has given you some ideas about some other kinds of records that you could be looking for. Records about immigration and military service, records about marriage licenses, records um, about medical conditions, and particularly all of those records about religious affiliations and the rights and services that go along with some of the various religions. Well, that is all I have for you today. If you are watching this live, I will be on chat in just a few minutes to answer any additional questions you might have. Until next time, this is Krista Cowan. Have fun climbing your family tree.